Hello, welcome to the channel. Uh, today what we're going to talk about is a wealth management demo that I recently showed at the Nordic Integration Summit. And I wanted to share it all with you on the YouTube channel. So let's go ahead and let's dive in. So this is a use case I've been working on with uh, one of our financial services customers. And they have wealth managers, so people that help people plan their investments and their retirement. And so this was a good opportunity to go ahead and build an agent that helps a wealth manager, you know, manage customers and, and help them as part of this process. So what we have here is a situation where we've got a, a customer and this customer would like to book a meeting with their wealth manager and their customer naturally has information across several different systems and the wealth manager wants to be able to manage that process more effectively. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build an agent in Azure Logic Apps using the A2A conversational capabilities that we've recently introduced. And we're going to be able to help orchestrate this process for them. Now, we could see some of the tools that we're going to be able to take advantage of. And, and this is kind of there's two sides to this, a pre-meeting and a post-meeting. So if we think about the pre-meeting, we're going to want to be able to you know, schedule a meeting by being able to look up our availability and outlook. We're going to want to be able to send an email that includes a pre-meeting briefing document. We want to be able to book that team's meeting so that we can actually have that conversation with the customer. And there's also some additional information we need. We want to be able to access the customer demographic information from Salesforce. And we also want to be able to access their portfolio information as well. Now to complement these actions, these tools that are available to us, we're going to leverage a Google web search, which will also help us with our pre-meeting brief. And we'll be able to catch up on the latest news related to the different equities or holdings that our customer has and better prepare for that meeting. Now, the next piece of this is the post meeting. So after we've actually gone ahead and had the meeting with the customer, we want to be able to capture the essence of that meeting. So we want to be able to grab the transcripts of that, info, of that meeting and to be able to save that inside of Salesforce. Now, we don't want to grab the entire transcript verbatim. That could be too lengthy and, and sort of too much noise. So we can actually leverage the large language model to be able to go ahead and summarize that information for us, then be able to put it into Salesforce as an opportunity, link it to the account for our customer, so that down the road, when we want to actually meet with them again, we can revisit what we had talked about before and make sure that we're giving a great experience to our customers. So let's head over to the Azure portal and let's see all of this in action. Now, before we get too far into the setup of the actual solution. I did want to just talk briefly about knowledge. Now in this case what I'm leveraging is actually a Word document that contains knowledge and this knowledge is there to complement and enhance the abilities of our language, large language model. So here we're going to outline our business process and all of the different actions that we want our agent to be able to be able to go ahead and perform. And so this is very valuable because this is a, a document that like a business analyst can actually go ahead and author and update and understand. This also would be allow like a business subject matter expert as well. So what gets a little bit interesting here is that we're now starting to sort of mix the business requirements with the execution of our agent and it kind of goes hand in hand. And I think one of the benefits of this is that it allows you to kind of protect your data assets too by specifying exactly the different actions or tools that you want to be able to call. So if someone tries to access additional information, then we know that that can't happen because we're actually safeguarding it by being able to say only perform actions that come from our standard operating procedures document, which happens to be this document here. All right, so we're in the Azure portal. We've gone ahead and created a conversational agent. Here we can see it's using the A2A trigger, which is going to allow us to run this uh, in an authenticated conversational session. Uh, we've got our agent here. Uh, in this case, I'm using ChatGPT 4.1. I've tried this with GPT-5, it does work. I, I would say that uh, 4.1 is a little bit faster. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that it's a better model necessarily, but in this case, it, it was able to provide me results accurately, but also quicker than 5.0, hence me going down this route. As we see in the system prompt, that we want to leverage the standard operating procedures and that that can go ahead and be obtained 
through our tool that basically will grab that information. And so that's what's going to happen here within our tool. We've got a tool called Business Process where we're going to grab that document from SharePoint. Then we're going to parse it uh, using the AI operation. That's just going to remove a lot of like that additional binary information that you find inside of a Word document. So we've got some other tools that uh, we've kind of called out on the previous PowerPoint slide, but we're going to have a tool that will re retrieve previous meeting notes from Salesforce. We've got a tool that will create that opportunity and link it to the account. We've got a tool that will grab transcripts from Graph API. We've got a pre-briefing document uh, tool that will go ahead and generate a document for us. We'll go ahead and grab news from Google. We'll grab customer portfolio information, in this case from table storage. We'll grab customer details, both account and contact from Salesforce. We'll have a tool that will book a meeting. We'll also have a tool that will go ahead and retrieve the wealth manager's email address and their calendar availability. Now, what's interesting about these actions, these three in particular, these are Microsoft first party actions. I've configured these to go ahead and use the per user connection. And what that actually allows you to do is when you select this particular option, it will actually allow you to use this dynamic connection. So for the logged in user in the chat surface, those actions, these tools, these Microsoft ones that have been configured with that per user connection will actually use the security context of the logged in user when communicating with those systems. So this is a huge thing from a governance and data security perspective where the agent cannot act or elevate any sort of permissions. It's going to act and use the permissions of that logged in user. And so that's where we can go ahead and securely look up meeting times because we're actually doing it in the security context of the logged in user. That's pretty cool. That's something that you should to be aware of. So let's head over to our chat experience. So this is inside of Logic Apps. This is part of the Logic Apps conversational experience here. And we can now start to issue some prompts uh, to our agent. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of a cheat sheet here just to kind of uh, help out with uh, not typing so much here, but I'm going to just start with, hey, I'm a wealth manager. I just want to know what is this agent able to go ahead and do. Now, I am being prompted to log in here. This is a good thing. So uh, we know that this is secure and that, you know, when I go ahead and perform those different actions, those do take place underneath my security context, which is quite good and quite useful from that perspective. So uh, this is just kind of need to do this because it was uh, the beginning of a session and uh, I've just kind of returned. So we're going to come back and say, hey, what can you help out with? What it's going to now do is it's going to go into that standard operating procedures call and actually see all of the different capabilities that are available. So this is pretty cool. Now, what um, I can do, and as I mentioned before, I, I want to make sure that my agent is only going to do the things I want it to go ahead and do. So I'm going to say, hey, can you grab me a coffee? Um, but in this case, it can't um, because it can only do the things that were called out in the standard operating procedures guide, which is pretty cool. All right, so let's head back. Let's do something a little more productive. So we have a customer here called Jordan Avery, and I would like to be able to go ahead and get their customer details and the portfolio information for this particular customer. Now, this is going to take care of calling a few different tools. And it's going to go ahead and do that kind of in parallel too. We're like that was pretty quick. We actually called Salesforce twice plus Azure Table Storage plus the model did some calculations here on its own in terms of P&L. Uh, so that's actually pretty awesome. Yeah, so that that's that's great. It went ahead and did all of that uh, in parallel and returned the information back to us. So we can see some of the high level information from the account itself and then the contact information and that portfolio information too. Now, in this part of their holdings, uh, we see that there's, uh, you know, they hold Intel, they hold AMD, and, you know, there's something that kind of sticks out in my mind. I watch CNBC frequently, and I'm like, hey, I bet you there's some news around AMD and Intel. Uh, this might be some, in some information that I want to actually catch up on and actually, you know, make sure I'm familiar with this so that I can actually talk intelligently with the customer about this. Okay, so here we've got some information, some links we can go ahead and read. Now, I want to have a meeting with Jordan. Jordan's requested a meeting. And so I want to go ahead and generate a pre-meeting briefing document. And I want that to be emailed to me so that I can go ahead and reference that later on. 
So I'm going to go ahead and ask for a pre-meeting brief, and that will include the portfolio information, but it'll also go ahead and include uh, some of this news that we've recently discovered as well. Uh, so this is going to run, and I should receive an email shortly. Okay, looks like the email's been sent. We've got some recommendations and some things that we should consider discussing. Now we head over to my inbox, and sure enough, I do have a briefing document here. So let's go ahead and let's open it. And sure enough, here's a briefing document, and we've got information that we're actually interested in, and we can go ahead and review that with the customer. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see what's next. Uh, now we're ready to get a meeting booked. Now Jordan's asked for a meeting on October 30th. So let's go ahead and see what my schedule looks like. Now, since I've logged in before, I'm not being asked to authenticate again and actually use and create a new dynamic connection. But if I, this was the first time me actually running this agent, I would be prompted here to authenticate and consent to using my connection to access my mailbox. That's already taken place, so we're, we're good from that perspective. So here I've got a few different options uh, where my calendar is available. So let's go ahead and say 8 a.m. works. And uh, we said it would be 30 minutes, so that's already implied. And do, 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 so meeting subject, well, let's call it portfolio review. And we're going to say this is with Jordan. And so now what's interesting is because it knows about Jordan, because we previously went and looked up his account information, his contact information, it knows what Jordan Avery's email is. I don't have to go ahead and provide it. That's something that's just been available for us as well. So I now have a meeting booked with Jordan. Now let's just check our calendar, make sure that did take place. And sure enough, here it is. We've got a meeting 8 a.m. in Mountain Time and with Jordan. So that's been sent to his email address and we've got a high level agenda as well. So pretty awesome. All right, so let's now sort of fast forward time. I've got had a meeting with Jordan and we've discussed his portfolio and, and discussed some opportunities. I now want to go ahead and collect that information. I want to then make sure that it's summarized and sent to Salesforce. So let's go get that meeting transcript. Now this is a capability that's available through the Graph API. Uh, so you can go ahead and do this. Obviously you need the access to go do this, but um, you have the ability to do this for meetings that you do own, and you can go ahead and uh, grab that transcript. And so here, just kind of a high level summary of the transcript itself, so that's fine. And let's now go ahead and update Salesforce with that information. So we'll just ask for that to take place here. All right, now Salesforce has been updated with that opportunity. So let's head over to Salesforce and let's find the Contoso account. So let's go accounts, or sorry, the Jordan Avery account rather. And then if we come down here, we should see opportunities. And sure enough, there is our opportunity that we just went ahead and created through Salesforce. So that's pretty cool. And um, that uh, sort of summarizes all of the different capabilities that we have here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the run history, because uh, this is pretty interesting. So this was long running. This took place over a few minutes. But you can also imagine this being taking place over hours or even days. Uh, but here we've got full traceability. We can see exactly all of the different uh, requests that were made through chat, right? Hey, hi, what can you help me with? Can you get me a coffee? So everything that we talked about before. Then what's interesting is we can see all of the tool calls that take place here as well. So we can see exactly what was provided, inputs and outputs, tokens were used as part of those executions and we have all of that traceability here. Uh, another view kind of is to, to look at this task timeline and you can kind of look at the, each of these tasks as almost like a turn, right? Where I make a request to the agent then the agent does some work and sends a response back. And so we can see all of these different turns that have taken place. And you know, this should be the one for Salesforce uh, where we go ahead and we talk to Salesforce itself and be able to go ahead and send that information. Uh, this subsequent one would be just more of the model and the communication back uh, between the model and the end user as well. So hopefully that uh, helps. Uh, I think this is a very powerful use case 
What I find particularly interesting about this is that we are using how many systems here? What, 10? And a user didn't really have to leave the chat in order to go ahead and accomplish these different activities and subsequent goal. And so I think that's what's super powerful about using agent loop to be able to go ahead and leverage existing building blocks, existing connectors, existing workflows in order to go ahead and craft and construct one of these particular scenarios. If you were to go do this in code, this is a ton of work. And, and I would say when I built this, it was a matter of a few hours and just more testing and tweaking with the model and tweaking my prompts. But this does a ton, but it is not a very complex solution. So hopefully you enjoyed this and look for more later on on the channel as well. Take care.